How'd you like the focus of the group t this week, Coach? Well, I thought today was better. You know, I don't, you know, again, some good, some bad. I think that the the focus was good. I just don't know if the execution was great all week, and, you know, that's why you practice. Taylor said he's passed through concussion protocol. Good to get him kind of back in the mix and, yeah. and hope he picks up anyway. Yeah, you know, I think that to that point, you know, he had been playing better um, of how we expect him to play and I'm sure how he expects him to play. And, um, you know, we don't rush any of those things. Um, when, when guys are in the protocol, they, you know, follow everything and, and we follow it and we check in. And when the symptoms are down and they get to the point where they can start to return to play, then they start to return to play. And then when they get cleared, they get cleared. So it's great to have him back. How does that process go for you, just in contact with Bud Dupree and, and just making sure that he's coming along the way that he needs to, as far as injury-wise? Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, I think he's, you know, good. We'll try to work him in there and get him some snaps and see how he progresses. He, you know, I would say he came back favorably after the game, so, you know, that's positive. I guess to be more clear, like, do you have daily check-ins with me? But how you I have doing? daily check-ins with every single player, Teron. You know, I mean, I'm here from five in the morning until whenever we leave, and so the players come in and go in the training room. Try not to hang out in the locker room. That's the players' place. I don't. It's none of my business as long as everything's being taken care of in there. Uh, in the meetings, uh, in between meetings. Uh, so yeah, I talk to all the players and. You know, try to check in on them, whether it's um, injury related, personal matter, or, um, or or has something to do with you know football. Jones and uh, <laughs> Blazing Game are out. Jones and Blazing Game. Yeah, the one that's on the injury report. Yep. Yeah, I guess uh, a couple guys added on yesterday. I'm done talking about injuries. Those guys are out. That's it. Well, we got to be able to talk about more than just injuries on a Friday. Seriously. Yeah. You know you're getting juice from them because of how much this game means. It's important to kind of match and it kind of set a this tone is, yourself. This is, this, yeah, I get, you know, this is pro football. You know, every week there's juice. But, I, you know, we, we, we better be ready to go. Um, just like it would be if um, – you know, both teams run a feeder, both teams in it. You know what I mean? Again, we know each other very well. These are tough matchups. These are tough games. Decided by a few plays here and there. And uh, hopefully we can make those the, those plays that determine the outcome. And um, you know, we'll continue to prepare, and then we'll, we'll travel up there and you know, try to handle, handle the keys and, and the problems that they present. Leonard says that he feels this is a must-win game for them. You know, when you hear an opposing player say, like, well, what do you think of that, that type of comment? Well, I, again, I've been in this league a long time. They're, they're all must-wins. You don't have that many. You know, I mean, it's we don't play 162 games. You know, it's every every week is a you know, is a big game, and that's that's the mindset, and that's why we try to win or lose, fix the things, correct them, get a game plan. And, and move on to the next week. So, um, you know, this is a great challenge. Excited to go up there. And, you know, he's having a, a great year, fantastic player. And, you know, I'm sure he'll be doing everything he can to, to help his team win. I think when you uh, recognize Danico after the first Colts game, he actually maybe even got a little bit emotional, uh, which maybe speaks to how invested he is. I mean, have you mm -hmm. seen that from him since he's been here? Just Without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. This is, um, you know, you, you look at just where he's been and his journey to the National Football League and to this part of his career, junior college, you know, you guys want to, you know, you guys all know Vanderbilt. You ought to go down to, to East Mississippi Junior College and, you know, it's probably not the la uh, lap of luxury. And then to go on and, and earn a scholarship and then go undrafted, which, you know, everybody wants to get drafted. He went undrafted and then turn himself into a starting player and then free agency and then free agency again. So we're excited to have him as a person. I mean, it, we really, the person is, is who's been great and, and, and the players, you know, been probably better. 
You had three guys come back on your designated window this week. Do you feel like they made some pretty good progress in their in their first week? Then? Yeah. You know, I mean, they were able to get some work in and show team and have some pads on the other day. That's um, you know, that's an important process to to getting guys back. Is one the football conditioning, practicing, stringing some plays together, just so they can find out where they're at, and then also we can have a good sense of where they're at, and then you know, try to make decisions. Dan Clark's been a core special teamer since he's been here when he's been available, but he's had to play a lot more safety this year. How's he? How's he improved from the start of the season to now as a safety? Oh, I think that the you know Dane's made great strides. I think that Dane. Um, you know, didn't didn't play his best and would like to have played better against Jacksonville, um, but you know to his credit he continued to improve and you know I thought he played um, you know probably one of his better games you know last week and just uh, in all downs and and obviously we always have liked him as a special teams player and you know his development uh, at safety has been good to see this year and. Some of those injuries that he's had in the past that you referenced in his availability has probably limited that um, development. You, know, you can't get better at something that you can't do. So um, hopefully he can continue to improve and continue to help us on special teams. When a guy like him or, or anybody, for that matter, when they have to step in to be a starter, do you try to lessen their role on special teams, even if they're a poor guy there, or, or do you just say you got to do more? Well, you got to do more. You know, I mean, we've had some starters play on special teams, and we, you know, you got to be conscious of it during the how it's going during the game. You know, you don't want to, you know, completely wear a guy out, and maybe how he's come off a certain drive, and then, you know, have to, you know cover or be on a return team or be on a punt team going to defense or, um, you know, that Matthias Farley had to, you know, cover a kickoff and then go to, you know, go to sub defense in the last game. You know, I remember going in the huddle, say, hey, just a reminder, you know, don't run off the field after this kickoff. You're going to have to go to, um, you know, there's certain things that we can be able to do. Like, you know, again, you cover a kickoff, go play defense. Hopefully we're in, we're in good enough shape for that. He has obviously gotten off to a you know hot start this season. Just how much has he, you know, been an extension, um, kind of maybe of the, of the coaching staff out there on the defense with so much all the change you guys have had this well, I year. I think that that's uh, there's there's um, you know sometimes we ask him not to say things in practice. You know what I mean? So that so that it forces other guys to to get involved and to communicate. You know I think sometimes guys can rely on that too much and. That has been something that's been um, you know, great for us that, that have you know, the communication with him. You come over, he makes the adjustment on the sidelines, and then no, you know, nobody's perfect. But you know, to be able to make adjustments on the sidelines and then have, have Kevin go out and, and be able to, to get guys on the same page is, um, you know, it's nice. About Tory Carter's skill set, and in the games where he and Kari have both been active, is there something that maybe they do to complement each other? Well, you know, I think Tory's, um, you know, I, I think he, I don't think he minds contact. You know, I mean, I think he, when you play fullback, you have to be able, willing to, to to embrace contact. Um, he's somewhat versatile, you know, whereas his ability on special teams, uh, he's he's tried to improve in that area. Um, you know, and I think when they both, you know, to your, to your question about both being active. Um, you know, just felt like Corey could could fill a few more roles um, based on where we at we're at health wise at that point in time. Let's say a backup uh, protector or a third runner, uh, backup fullback. Um, that was kind of what you know where we went when we made that decision. We don't really mention David Legendary's name as an offensive lineman. I would imagine that's a good thing. So how has he you know been able to solidify that right tackle position for you? Oh, Qu you know, Quiz has been out there. He's been durable. He's been available. Um, he battles. He grinds. He competes. It hasn't been perfect. Um, you know, and I, and I think that those guys, you know, play well as a unit. Owen was talking this week about maybe feeling a little bit more energy, a little bit more mojo from Bud. <laughs> you know, maybe after that game where he gets his first sack. I wonder if that's something that you've noticed as, as Bud has been coming around here a little bit more energy. I'm just. We're all looking for production from everybody. If they want to, they want to be energetic and produce. Great. If they want to be uh, quiet and produce, that's great too. Uh, but you know, I think more so. I think it's a health thing. You know, I think it's how you feel. You know, you wake up and 
you know, at least I do, your back hurts or something and you're probably just trying to get through. Um, but I think as guys start to feel better, and this goes for everybody, you just notice as guys start to feel healthier that you hear them a little bit more. You know, for a Taylor example, you know what I mean? Taylor was, you know, when you're in a concussion protocol and you, you don't probably feel very well. I know you don't. And then as you move on and you go into the next week, you can kind of start to listen and you hear his voice a little more and so you start to figure that he's feeling a little better. On the note of that, because it's, it's hard maybe for guys like Darrington Evans, who's still so young um, in the league and he's kind of overcome so many injuries at this point, but we talked to him yesterday for the first time in a while and he, he seems to be on the right track mindset-wise. I mean, what have you seen from him just since he's been able to be back out there? Mm, I, not enough. Not enough. Jonathan Taylor, such an effective runner for them. Yeah, speed. Uh, I think he's uh, got a really good play strength. I think he's strong lower body, uh, and he's fat. You know, he's fast, right? He's fast. Uh, he's got a good jump cut, uh, but I also think he's got some patience where he doesn't just fly in there. Like he, he'll let some things set up and then, you know, step on the gas pedal. Uh, I think he's catching it better. You know, they, they use him in a lot of different roles. He's a, you know, he's a very good player. You know, I think. It just in the evaluations, you know, he just ran. He ran. He was a runner at Wisconsin, and now uh, you know, they throw him the football. They they do a lot of things with him, and you know, that that's a multi-talented skill set that he has. They rotate those three guys around. How, how do you evaluate that relative to? Well, I mean, I just listened to Frank. He said he's probably worthy of 20 carries, so I'd start there. I'd you know probably believe the head coach that wants to give the guy 20 carries. Now they all can. You know, they all have things that they do well, and I, you know, nobody knows better than us what what Hines can do. Um, but it, you know, I think it's going to start with Taylor, and then you know, Hines is going to have his plays, and he's got a great skill set, and you know, they think a lot of him. And then obviously Marlon Mack has, has had success in this league, and you know, he's ready to go whenever they call on him.